What's up guys, how's it going? Welcome to another video here on the channel. Today I'm going to talk about the case of Brianna Moore. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do, and don't forget to turn on the notifications. Now, without further ado, let's go to the video. Brianna Moore was the youngest daughter of the couple Cindy and Butch Moore, who besides her had two other daughters. She was described as an independent, happy girl who never got into trouble. Family and people close to her used to call her Brie, an affectionate nickname for Brianna. The young woman spent her entire life in Alaska, a state that, for those who don't know, is considered the most dangerous state in the United States for women. According to data from a 2019 survey, more than 50% of all women in Alaska have experienced some form of violence. At school, Brianna was seen as a dedicated and obedient student. Her favorite hobby was taking care of animals, and she always offered to take care of the pets of everyone on her street, especially when people were traveling. Some people even paid for it. Brianna also used to rescue stray animals. She even had three or four dogs in her house that she rescued, in addition to the dogs that the family already had. At the age of 17, the young woman heard from everyone around her that she should study veterinary medicine because of her love for animals. However, she revealed that she really wanted to study medicine, but in the field of pediatrics, as she would really like to work with children and do volunteer work to help with their treatment. As Alaska has a highly regarded medical university, Brianna didn't have to move to another state, and as soon as she graduated from high school, she started med school and continued living with her parents. While taking the course, Brianna began to insist on working at a dentist's office near her home. She spent every day there asking if there was a vacancy, since it was something related to health. However, the person in charge of the office said that she didn't need anyone and that she was too young for a job. But after much insistence, the office ended up hiring her as a kind of assistant receptionist on site. Brianna became a differential in the office she was very dedicated and praised by all patients. The young woman organized the entire schedule and knew the preferred times of almost everyone who was attended there, being considered one of the best employees who ever passed through the place. Around the same time, Brianna began a relationship with a young man named Joshua Almeida. That was in 2014, she was 19 and he was 21. According to reports, Brianna and Joshua were very attached and enjoyed doing just about everything together. She often slept at his parents' house, more specifically in the basement, which was where the boys' room was, and they felt they had more privacy there. It is said that both Brianna's parents and Joshua's parents were supportive of the two's relationship, as they seemed to get along very well. The boy lived in Alaska since 2006. His parents were in the military, and they used to be transferred frequently because of work. Due to this, Joshua was born in Japan as his parents had been transferred there while his mother was still pregnant. The boy spent his early years in the Asian country, but then his parents were transferred again and they had to move to another country. After moving to Alaska, Joshua finished school but didn't want to go to college. He then got a job at a mechanic shop and said that maybe he would get into a university when he was older. As I said earlier, Brianna's parents were supportive of her relationship with Joshua and they even liked the boy. But what they didn't know was that Joshua had a complicated history. Joshua had already been arrested for trying to run over a person, driving under the influence, illegally carrying a weapon, and also for physically assaulting his own mother. He also had other minor crimes on his record, which he never got arrested for. Joshua was without a doubt a violent guy, and that didn't stop when he started dating Brianna. During their relationship, the young woman would sometimes show up to work with a black eye and other signs of aggression across her body. However, her co-workers stated that they didn't know how to handle the situation and therefore thought it's best not to intervene. At the time, Joshua was on probation of misconduct involving a 2013 conviction for possession of a controlled substance. Due to this conviction, he was not allowed to carry weapons or even alcohol, 
but he didn't care and ignored this court ruling. Sometime after the start of the relationship between Joshua and Brianna, her sisters began to find the young woman's behavior strange, since Brianna suddenly stopped talking to them about their relationship and about her life in general, and before, they talked a lot about it. Later, the young woman's parents began to feel the same thing and felt that their daughter seemed very distant. Brianna no longer did the things she loved to do, like taking care of the neighbor's dogs and participating in volunteer work. Despite this distancing from Brianna, her parents didn't think it was something very serious and just thought that she was just too immersed in the relationship with her boyfriend, which is quite common among young people. Brianna's behavior also changed at work. After the beginning of the relationship, she no longer wanted to work every day and also became inattentive during office hours. According to some employees at the office where the young woman worked, she started to show some signs of nervousness, especially when she was late to leave, as if she was afraid of her boyfriend's reaction to that, who was usually waiting for her in the clinic's parking lot. On June 24, 2014, around 8.45 p.m., Brianna picked Joshua up from the Alcoholic Anonymous beating center he was attending. Afterwards, the couple stopped to buy a bottle of rum and headed back to Joshua's parents to watch a movie. Shortly after arriving at Joshua's parents' house, Brianna decided to take a quick shower before the movie, and when she returned, she saw that her boyfriend had already drunk half the bottle of the drink they had bought. From then on, according to Joshua himself, everything got very confusing and he couldn't explain what exactly happened. He said all he remembers is picking up his gun to show Brianna how to clean it, and he jokingly pointed at her. According to him, still as a joke, he pressed the trigger of the gun, believing that it was unloaded. Joshua's mother called the police around midnight 30, after waking up to her son's screams. She said she went to Joshua's room and found Brianna already dead with a bullet wound in the head and a gun lying next to her. According to the police, Joshua and his mother didn't call them until two hours after the incident. For some detectives, these hours may have been used by the two to get rid of evidence and think of a justification for the act. Joshua was arrested in the morning of the same day on charges of taking Brianna's life. He was also charged with illegal possession of a weapon. When heard by the police for the first time, Joshua said he was in the bathroom brushing his teeth when he heard a bang and found his lifeless girlfriend with a gun at her side. A few days later, he changed his version and said he lied because he was scared. Brianna's parents were informed of the incident as soon as the police became aware of it, in the early hours of June 25th. They were distraught and initially thought it was an accident, until they were informed that it had actually been a crime committed by their daughter's boyfriend. It was only after the crime that Brianna's family found out that Joshua had a long criminal record. Joshua had already physically assaulted his own mother, and shortly before he met Brianna, he was convicted of trying to run over his ex-girlfriend. According to reports from some people, Brianna had already been seen at least twice with a black eye, and a person who worked at Joshua's parents' house said he saw the young woman putting eyes on her eyes once. According to a witness, that day, she didn't even go to work because the wound was too visible. It was discovered by detectives that at Joshua's job, two employees even quit because they couldn't handle the boy's temper. Years earlier, Joshua had been diagnosed with borderline personality disorder, a severe mental illness marked by heightened instability in mood and behavior, as well as an extreme fear of rejection and abandonment. When Joshua gave his first statement to detectives, they immediately noticed the inconsistencies in his reports and realized that the case was not the one of someone that took their own life. Joshua assumed to them that he had been drinking that day, something he was prohibited by law from doing. He also said that Brianna had been drinking with him and that they were both drunk at the time of the tragedy. According to the expertise, given the position in which the shot was fired, it was impossible that he had been fired by the victim herself since she had used her own arms to protect herself from the shot. Both of the young woman's arms were perforated by the bullet. Forensics also determined that Joshua's mother moved the murder weapon before calling the police. Detectives discovered that the shot that took Brianna's life was fired with a gun using a noise suppressor, 
better known as a silencer. On further analysis of the victim's body, it was found that the cause of death was due to a skull fracture caused by the projectile fired by the weapon. That same analysis found that Brianna had no trace of alcohol in her blood, indicating that Joshua had lied when he said they were both drunk. Two days after the crime, Joshua had his first court appearance. Brianna's parents, along with some of her relatives and friends, and also some of Joshua's family members, also attended the hearing. At the hearing, Joshua sat calmly in his chair, and to most questions asked by the judge, he simply replied, Yes, Your Honor. Brianna's father, very emotional, said that his daughter dedicated all her time to her boyfriend. He said that everything she did was for Joshua, and she was always with him. In finalizing his statement, Brianna's father said that with the information he had, there was no doubt that there was nothing more than an execution. Monique Dahl, one of the detectives in charge of the case, also made statements during the hearing. According to her, an initial analysis carried out at the crime scene indicated that there was no possibility that Brianna had shot herself and that everything pointed to Joshua having fired the shots. Ultimately, Joshua told the judge that he had enough time to think about the plea deal he was offered and decided to waive his right to a trial. With that, a date was set for another hearing, and at that hearing, Joshua's future would be set. Before finalizing that first hearing, the judge set Joshua on 1.5 million bond and said that he was a significant threat to society. Shortly after the end of that first hearing, Cindy, Brianna's mother, gave an interview in which she said she was relieved not to have to go through a trial, as she didn't want to relive the moments leading up to the crime. Also, before the start of the second hearing that would determine Joshua's fate, Brianna's parents asked everyone who knew her personally to send letters to the court. According to them, these letters would help Joshua receive a severe sentence. During the final hearing, Teary-eyed attorneys and family members presented conflicting narratives about the relationship Joshua and Brianna shared, as well as what exactly happened on the night of June 24, 2014. In his testimony before court, Joshua recounted that while Brianna was taking a shower at his parents' house, he took blankets and pillows from his bedroom to the basement so they could watch a movie. When the young woman got out of the shower, he had already drunk about half of the bottle of the rum they had bought. Joshua says the rest of the night was marked by periods of blackouts, and what he's remember, he was sitting on the couch and the movie was still playing. He said that afterwards, he took the gun and placed it on the coffee table to show Brianna how to take it apart, clean it, and put it back together again. From there, he said everything went dark again, and later he remembers talking to the young woman while he was holding the gun. Brianna would then have asked him to put the gun away and go to bed, and he would have told her not to worry as the gun was not loaded. Joshua then pointed the gun at her and pulled the trigger, and since the gun was loaded, it ended up shooting. According to him, when he realized that the gun had gone off, he grabbed Brianna by the shoulders, looked into her eyes, and realized that she was already dead. He then said that at that moment he started screaming. Also during the hearing, Joshua apologized to Brianna's family and his own family. He said he deeply regret his actions and told the judge he needed treatment, as he was not in his right mind. He also said that this was something that no one would ever get over, and for that he was deeply sorry. The prosecutor responsible for the case gave a different scenario of the crime. He said there was no doubt that the shot was intentional. According to him, the couple arrived at Joshua's parents' house shortly after 8 p.m. Over the course of two hours, Joshua drank nearly an entire bottle of rum. Earlier that day, the young woman reportedly sent Joshua text messages, saying she didn't like it when he drank. Joshua was mad at her because she hadn't let him drink more the night before, the day before the crime. According to the prosecutor, Brianna thought she could fix Joshua, she would tell him things like, stop drinking, I don't like who you become when you're drinking. At some point that night, Joshua got a text from his mother asking what he was doing, but he didn't respond. His mom thought he just hadn't seen the messages, so she went to take a shower and go to sleep. Some time later, she heard her son yelling, mom, and when it was around midnight 30, she called emergency. 
the prosecutor said that the bottle of rum was under the bed. For him, Brianna didn't want Joshua to drink anymore and decided to hide the boy's bottle. Joshua, upon seeing this, was furious, he grabbed the gun, pointed it at Brianna, and pulled the trigger. Brianna, in a defensive reflex, put her arms over her head, but that didn't help, as the projectile went through her arms and entered her head, taking her life immediately. In court, Brianna's ashes were in a plastic bag placed in a black box. When her older sisters, Brooke and Brandy Moore, spoke to the judge, they held the bag telling the judge that it was all that was left of their sister. Both sisters said they saw Joshua's violent behavior in the past and confronted Brianna about it. Brooke said that at one point, Brianna asked if she had ever been hit on by a boyfriend. Brandy said there was a side of her that knew what was really going on but didn't want to believe. In her testimony, Brandy said she never thought her sister would end up like this and started crying. Also during the hearing, an ex-girlfriend of Joshua testified against him. She reported that in 2012, after he had been drinking, he attacked her and broke one of her teeth. She also said that he dragged her across the room pulling her hair and then broke a mirror around her waist. Then he would have taken the gun and fired two shots towards her, but didn't hit her while she managed to flee the house and save herself. After the young woman's escape, Joshua cleaned up the entire crime scene and got rid of the used weapon. When the police went to his house, he said that nothing unusual had happened there and that his girlfriend was making up stories. Joshua's parents even corroborated his version and said that their son was at home sleeping the whole time. Finally, the police didn't pursue the complaint due to lack of evidence. If Joshua had been arrested around this time for trying to take his ex-girlfriend's life, Brianna would probably still be alive. Joshua's parents, Shannon and Philip, also spoke in court. They said they felt like they had been silenced as their son's court case unfolded. Philip said the crime has affected both families. Shannon said that Brianna was at her house all the time and that her son wasn't always a horrible person, but when he drank, he became someone very different. She said that she and her husband tried to help him several times and questioned that if he was such a bad person, why would Brianna's parents allow her to spend every day with him? Shannon said she had no idea her son had a gun or that he was still consuming alcohol. She said her family loved Brianna and she made them laugh all the time and even talked about moving in with them. At the end of the hearing, the prosecutor in charge of the case asked for the maximum penalty for Joshua Almeida, while his lawyer said that what happened was a result of a reckless actions and not something intentional. After all this, Joshua Almeida was sentenced to 75 years in prison. In 2039, when he is 47 years old, Joshua will be able to apply for parole. According to data, the story of Brianna Moore was not an uncommon occurrence in the United States. It is estimated that nearly 1 in 14 high school students in the country have experienced physical dating violence. After the crime against Brianna, her parents quickly realized how teen dating violence affects young people, so they decided to reach out to Alaska legislators to create the Alaska Safe Kids Act, also known as the Bree Act of 2015 and follow-up legislation in 2018. As I have already mentioned, Bree which was the name of the law, was the nickname that they affectionately given to Brianna by her family. With the passing of the Bree Act and the state programs created from it, Alaska teen dating violence statistics were cut by nearly half. Brianna's family and friends held a celebration of life on July 1, 2014 at the Kincaid Park Chalet. At that ceremony, they shared memories of the young woman and played a slideshow of her life. Brianna was cremated and her ashes remain with the family. And this was the story of Brianna Moore, a girl with a great future ahead of her, but who had her life been taken away by her own boyfriend, a young man full of problems and inconsequential in his actions. Alright folks, so that's it for today. Thanks for watching until the end. Best wishes, and I see you next time.